Okay guys, so today's video is finally the much requested, highly anticipated, updated perfume collection tour. So I've been promising this to you guys for a while now, but I was waiting because I had a couple of perfumes coming and I wanted to make sure those were here for when I did this updated collection because they are incredible fragrances. I also wanted to get my perfume declutter video out first and that one I was sort of on the fence about even posting because I knew that there was going to be a lot of people sort of shocked at some of the ones that I decided to let go of um, but I finally got that up and in today's video I think you're going to see why those ones were okay for me to let go because I still have some incredible fragrances here and to be honest you guys I never feel guilty or bad or sad about decluttering ever because it feels like such a weight off of my shoulders. I hate holding on to things that don't get used. So for me, it doesn't matter how much it costs, how beautiful it is, whether or not I like the smell. For me, it's all about do I actually use it? Am I going to put it to use? So the fragrances that are left in my perfume collection are ones that I absolutely love. There are one or two that I could I'm kind of thinking about like but I'll tell you all about that when we go through them so I hope that you're interested to see what I have today and before we get into the collection I do want to give a shout out to the sponsor of the first part of today's video which is Ana Luisa Jewelry so Ana Luisa Jewelry is a gorgeous perfume company and I've been really interested to try some of their products so I was really happy when they offered to send me a few things to review for you guys. They have exceptional quality and really really good prices. They start at $39 and work their way up so they literally have something for everybody no matter what kind of budget you're on. What I really like about them is that they are carbon neutral so they do try to offset their carbon emissions which makes them a little bit more eco-friendly compared to some other companies that are out there. They also have really high quality metals, so I was really impressed with the quality of these pieces when I got them. So the ones that I chose are this really beautiful dainty infinity bracelet. As you guys know, I love dainty, minimalist, simple pieces because I think they are so classy, so timeless, and so chic. They go with everything and basically two or three pieces does it all. You don't need to have a huge collection when you have a few pieces that just sort of do everything with one shot. I also chose this really beautiful chain bracelet and I actually really like the way they looked layered together so I think I'm going to start wearing them layered together as opposed to one or the other. They're just so elegant and pretty and they look really expensive and I also really like this gorgeous little heart necklace and if you guys know me you know that I'm not a necklace girl. I don't really wear a lot of necklaces. This one I will be wearing proudly because it, again it's not too much. It's not too big. It's not too bulky. It perfectly fits my minimalist simple aesthetic and at the same time it has like this understated elegance about it and I really really like it. So it's very dainty, very delicate, very pretty, and also really well made. So if you guys are interested in checking out Ana Luisa's jewelry, I will have a link down below and you can save 10% off of your purchase with the code SIMPLECHICLIFE10. So I'll have everything linked down below, all the details. Definitely go and check them out if you're looking for something for yourself or a beautiful gift idea for somebody. They're very affordable, very high quality, and yeah, I'm just really impressed with them overall. And with that, let's get into today's video. Okay, so I just pulled my shelf out of the closet so that I could have some decent lighting to show you guys all the perfumes so that they don't look like they're sitting in a dungeon. Um, yeah, so why don't we start out with the ones that are on the shelf and then I'll take you through my trays because that's where my sort of like favorite, favorite perfumes are. Okay, so um, as you can see, I have them kind of arranged, not in any particular fashion. Um, I mostly just like them to look somewhat aesthetically pleasing, so I have them mixed um, like short and tall bottles and I try to keep the tall bottles in the back just for like a little bit of a gradient and otherwise there's really no rhyme or reason for how I have them stored um, with the exception that many of the nighttime slash date night perfumes are up here and like winter perfumes and then a little bit more of like my summertime um, fresh floral ones are on the bottom shelf. Okay, so starting in the very back, I might not pull this all the way out, but we have Bodacious from Juicy Couture. That one um, I only have because my boyfriend really likes that one. You guys know that. It's kind of a coconutty, um, really sweet young perfume, and I hate the bottle, and I don't even particularly like the scent, but like I say, I keep it because my boyfriend really likes that one. And beside that one, we have Michael Kors Midnight Shimmer and this is a beautiful woody vanilla. I get lots of compliments on that one. Um, so that one I really really like even though I haven't worn it much lately. Beside that one, oops, beside that one we have Dior Addict. I absolutely love Dior Addict. This is a very creamy um, white floral vanilla fragrance and it's excellent for date nights. Um, has amazing performance. I wear that one. Um, actually I've been wearing that one a little bit more lately. 
And beside that one we have Montel Chocolate Greedy. And this is currently the only Montel fragrance that I have and I really like it. This is like a powdery, um, sort of like a hot chocolatey type of a fragrance. I really like the sillage from this one. It's just very pleasant and very easy to wear and really sweet and I do like that one. Beside that one in the back, we have Tom Ford Noir Pour Femme. This is a really delicious, like deep dark dessert sort of a fragrance. To be honest, it's not one I gravitate for a lot, but this is one that I think would be better for like going out night on the town. And of course I haven't done that in recent times. So I think that's why I haven't reached for that one. In the second row, we have Black Opium Neon. And this is kind of a fruitier take on the original Black Opium. And I actually really, really like this one. This one for me basically is like girls night out. I don't really use this for anything else. I can't really think of an occasion I would wanna wear this except getting dressed up and going out for drinks with my girlfriend. So again, I haven't done that lately. So I've only actually worn this one since I've purchased it but beside that we have Mansara Roses Vini. So this one was the one that beat out the Roses Musk from Montal that I'm sure many people were shocked that I got rid of because I said that I thought I liked Roses Musk better. I actually like this better. The reason being this has that vanilla in there so that was kind of the tiebreaker. Um, this one I just found to be a little bit more sweet vanilla which I decided I liked better overall. Although this one you guys I honestly don't wear very often. Um, but I still really, really love the way it smells, so I just don't wear it very often. Beside that, we have Gold Couture from Juicy Couture, another one that's a favorite from my boyfriend. This one I find just to be very flirtatious and fun, and I really like wearing this for date nights. So this one is one that I actually grab for a lot. Beside that, we have Killian Rolling in Love, and this is kind of a almondy, irisy, powdery, lipsticky fragrance for nighttime. It's very, very deep and delicious and sexy and dark, and I really, really like that one. In the next row we have Marc Jacobs Decadence. So that's a super sweet like plum vetiver nighttime scent. Very very um, loud and kind of obnoxious and I really like that one actually. That's one that I find a little bit addictive. I keep coming back to it. This is actually Alien Essence Absolute. Um, I don't have the original bottle for Alien Essence so I had a refill and I put it in this one. And I did recently actually get rid of my refill because I have too many perfumes. I don't think I'm ever going to come back to a refill. Like it's going to take me a long time just to go through that one. So I didn't think I needed um, my backup bottle. Beside that one, we have Killian Princess. And this one, everybody knows. This is like a tea marshmallow fragrance. It's very soft and fluffy and sweet and feminine. And I haven't reached for it a lot during the past couple of weeks, but I do really like that one. Beside that one, we have Le Petit Robe Noir Intense. This is a blueberry cotton candy. Really sweet, really sexy. Um, works out really well for little black dresses as the bottle would imply. And that is the only petite, oh no, sorry. This is the second Petit Robe Noir that I have. And beside that one, I have Replica Jazz Club. I absolutely love this. People ask me why I have this on here. It's because it holds the scent in. Mm. And then when I come and smell it, I can still smell the fragrance. Otherwise, if you don't have that on, it's really hard to sniff it without spraying it. So that's why I like to keep that on there. So this is one of my favorite, all-time favorite tobacco fragrances. And in the very front row, we have Narciso Rouge. So this is actually the only Narciso Rodriguez fra fragrance that I currently have. I did recently let go of my Poudre because as I told you guys, this one I do tend to reach for more. I just haven't reached for the Poudre in probably a year if not longer, but I still do reach for this one. I love this one. It's a very sexy kind of a um, orange blossom, musky, powdery, um, tonka bean fragrance. Just really, really nice for date nights. I love it. Beside that one, we have Tom Ford Tobacco Vini. This one is one that I admittedly, you guys, I do not ever desire to wear this one. Not yet. Um, I love the way it smells. Haven't worn it, but again, this one I think has a time and a place. It's a very specific... Um, very deep, slightly masculine type of a fragrance. So it's not super easy to wear for me. Um, yeah, but I do still really like it. So we're holding on to that one and hopefully over the next year I get sometimes some chances to wear that one. Beside that one, we have Dior Hypnotic Poison. This is the Eau de Toilette. I did let go of my Hypnotic Poison EDP because I realized I liked the way this one smelt better than the EDP. Um, I don't wear this very often though. I have to be honest, I'm kind of sick of this one. 
Um, this is one that I used to wear a long time ago, like 10 years ago. I actually went through two bottles of this. Anyways, I still love the fragrance, but I don't wear it very often. And then beside that one, we have La Nuit Tresor à la Folie. This is absolutely beautiful. This smells like pink chiffon, not the Bath and Body Works one, but if pink chiffon at nighttime, like sexy nighttime had a, had a smell, it would be this one. So it's like very, a little bit gourmandy, very vanilla, a little bit powdery, very sexy. I love the bottle. Um, also really, really good performance with that one. So I absolutely love La Nuit Tresorella Foley. The only thing I don't like is the lid. The lid is very flimsy and it actually broke. I don't know if you can see that, but so the lid doesn't stay on very well, which is a little annoying. Okay, moving on to my second shelf, which is mostly all summer fragrances. I kind of tried to keep like all of my fresh floral and Chypre style fragrances down here. So in the very back, we have Guerlain Le Petit Robe Noir au Fraiche. I really like this one. I have to thank Yana from The Scented because she was the first person I heard talk about this one and she really turned me on to this fragrance. And this smells very similar to the original Petit Robe Noir except soapier, fresher, um, and it's got a little bit of a nutty accord to it as well. So it's a very unique, soapy, clean scent. I'll be honest, I am not quite as in love with it now as I was a few months ago. But anyways, I still really like this one and I have actually started wearing this one to bed sometimes. It's like a nice fragrance to wear to bed. And beside that one, we have Eau de Merveille from Hermes. And this one, you guys know if you watch my channel, this was the first and only fragrance my boyfriend has ever purchased me. So it's very special for that reason. So it's um, a really interesting kind of a woody, fur, resinous, um, like foresty orange fragrance. It's like a sparkling orange woody fragrance. Very, very interesting and unique and unisex, I would say. And I really like it for summertime. Has really good performance too for being a um, floral fragrance. And beside that one, we have Flora Botanica from Balenciaga. This has to be one of my favorite, favorite summertime perfumes, even though I haven't worn it in the summer yet. Um, this is a beautiful mint, cannabis, earthy, kind of an ambery rose fragrance. I love it. It's beautiful. It's very green. It's very fresh. It's very crisp. And I cannot wait to wear that. And beside that one, we have Livia Bell Intensement. And this is the one that kicked out my Livia Bell Leclat. Um, this is more of a raspberry vanilla Livia Bell. So I like this better than the original and I like this better than the Livia Bell Eclat. It's very girly, very flirtatious, very sweet. If you don't like sweet fragrances, you wouldn't like this one, um, but I really like it. It doesn't have as good of lasting power as the original though, I will say that. And beside that we have Olympia from Paco Rabanne. This one has a pretty good dent in it. Um, this was like my holy grail ride or die perfume in March of 2020. It was one of the very first blind buys that I ever purchased and I still really like it. Very sexy, very bold. My boyfriend loves it. Um, great for dates. Um, but I do have to say it's not quite my like it's not like my holy holy grail really anymore i think i have other favorites but i still do love this one so this is one of those ones that has stood the test of time i loved it then and i still love it now it's just not like quite at the top of my list anymore Coming back over to the left in the second row, we have a girly, girly, girly sob, you guys. <laughs> Ely sob, girl of now, my goodness. Um, so this is a very popular one. This is like a pistachio, nutty, um, fruity, sweet fragrance and very, very popular. I like the bottle. This is one that I often want to declutter because I'm kind of tired of it. I used to wear it already like a couple of years ago and I kind of got sick of it, but you know what? I reach for it. Like, I have been putting a dent in it and I do reach for it when I don't know what to wear. It's a very easy grab and go. So for that reason, I haven't let it go, but sometimes I'm like so tired of it, but I can't bring myself to let it go. So beside that, we have Chloe Nomad. I really, really like Chloe Nomad. Again, this is one of those sort of Chypre style fragrances. It's very earthy, oak, mossy, fresh, a um, little bit floral, a very subtle, fruity opening. It's beautiful. I love it. It's kind of up there for me or up there with Flora Botanica for me. It's like one of those interesting fragrances for summertime. Um, yeah, but definitely a summer perfume. I tried wearing it one day in the winter and it did not work. I didn't like it. So it has to be summertime for me to wear this one, but I love that one. And beside that, we have Ariana Grande REM. This is a salty gourmand fragrance with a bit of lavender. Smells like dryer sheets, smells like clean skin, smells like gourmand, sexy nighttime, 
perfume sort of so for me I really really like it I, I find it to be a quite a sexy perfume I really like it for nighttime this is my only Ariana Grande perfume and it is my second celebrity fragrance and beside that one we have Tom Ford Fleur de Portofino I absolutely love this one you guys this is newer to my collection this is a floral fragrance with a bit of citrus and a bit of musk it is very distinct it's a very distinct type of floral it's not like my typical white floral or yellow floral it's just I mean there are yellow and white florals in here but it's got a different vibe to it it really I'm gonna smell it actually it smells like Tom Ford you know Mm, it's so nice and it has a it has a very rich smell to it to me it smells very expensive and I really like the bottle as well the bottle's so pretty so that's that one coming over to our third row we have Chanel Chanso Fresh. I love the chance fragrances from Chanel they're all amazing um, the only one I don't have is the Otandra um, but yeah this one's beautiful this is a very fresh citrusy summertime fragrance but it has that Chanel DNA in the bottom so you know that it smells expensive and um, it's just really it's just a really good perfume for the summertime I can't wait to wear that in the summer beside that we have Coco Mademoiselle a classic I won't talk about that one too much that's our orange patchouli fresh soapy sexy fragrance beside that we have Alien Alien from Mugler. This is another one that has stood the test of time. I bought it last year, almost a year ago. I love it. Still one of my favorites. So bold, so sexy, and also really good for the summertime. I do consider this a summertime fragrance, even though it is very heavy. For me, it is a better summertime fragrance. Beside that one, we have 100 Silent Ways from Nishan A. And this is the one that kicked out Nishan A. Annie. So I could have kept both. Both of them are amazing, but like I told you guys, I didn't find the Annie to be super wearable, whereas I do find this one very wearable. So Annie was beautiful, but I just, I didn't like how I felt when I wore it. Um, this one is a very sweet, creamy, floral fragrance. It has some osmanthus. It's got vanilla. It's got a woodiness to it. It's got some depth to it. It's not really a fresh fragrance at all. So this one I think you could actually wear all year round, but because it's predominantly floral with a bit of a fruitiness, I did put it with my summertime perfumes, but I think this would be really good for like summer date night. So like evening, summertime or daytime, winter, whatever you prefer. And um, beside that one, we have Glossier U. So this is a irisy, powdery um, fragrance for women. It has a bit of an ambroxan type of a quality to it. It almost has like a pencil shaving vibe. Um, and I actually really like this one, surprisingly, you guys. This is one that I really had to take my time with because when I first got it, I didn't think it had much of a smell at all. And now I really appreciate the smell and I really like wearing this one to work because it's very inoffensive and it smells like you're not wearing perfume at all. You just smell good. And moving on to our third row, we have Guerlain Mont Guerlain Floral. I really, really like this one. I have three Mont Guerlain fragrances and part of me feels like I don't need all three, but I think I'm really going to love wearing this in the summer. This is... I've said that this is my favorite flanker, but I kind of go back and forth because the intense one I also love. So it's kind of between this one and the intense, to be honest. And this one is like a little bit fresher and more floral. It's got some peony in there and it's just a beautiful summertime version. It is discontinued though, sadly, but I would like to try the new sparkling bouquet, I think it's called. So I would like to try that one. Beside that one, we have Erin Hibiscus Palm. This is the closest you're gonna come to a tropical fragrance in my collection. Um, I did recently declutter Bronze Goddess and Terracotta La Parfum because as I told you guys, I realized I prefer more of a floral fragrance or a fresh fragrance or even a sheep style fragrance over the coconut fragrances. It's not that I don't like the way coconut smells. There is some coconut in here, but for me, this one is very sparkling, very luxe, very floral. Um, and it's just beautiful. So this one for me is like my ideal tropical vacation fragrance, I guess. And it also has incredible lasting power. If you're looking for a coconutty, tropical smelling vacation fragrance that lasts all day, this is the one. And beside that we have Sarah Jessica Parker Lovely. This is the other celebrity fragrance that I have. Huge dent because I wear this to bed. So I don't wear perfume every day, you guys, which seems weird because I'm addicted to perfume and I have a lot of them, but I don't actually wear them every day. Um, but I do often wear something to bed. So that's why this one has such a big dent. And then beside that we have from 
Exi Dolo Love and Crime. This one should really be up here with the sweet fragrances. This is definitely not a summertime fragrance. Um, this is a beautiful orangey sweet gourmand fragrance. There's chocolate, there's sugar, I think there's vanilla too and for me it has a very like caramel type of a smell. Very sweet, very bold, you don't need very much. This is the one that kicked out Poison Girl because they're kind of along the same lines because they're both an orange gourmand sexy fragrance but this one has much better performance so that's why I decided to keep this one and that about wraps it up for my first shelf and now we will move on to my trays so my first tray is a gold perfume tray that I got from Amazon I will have it linked down below if anybody's interested it was very affordable and I really like having a few perfumes out on display. So I kind of keep some in the closet that I'm not using and I kind of like to keep some of my favorite ones out here. So these might not necessarily be ones that I wear all the time, but there are some that stand out to me for some reason or I just think the bottle is really beautiful and I wanna have it on display. Um, yeah, let's just start in the back. So in the back we have Izzy Miyake um, Pure Nectar Parfum. This was actually gifted to me from my friend Yana um, from The Scented. Uh, we were sending each other decans and she graciously sent me this whole bottle of perfume and I really like it. Um, it's just a very easy, classy, grab and go type of a floral scent for the summertime. There's a bit of honey, there's a bit of, I believe, sea notes in here. I think there's ambroxan. So it's a very interesting, pretty, but elegant, wearable floral with really good performance. Um, so I really like that one. Beside that one, we have Kaeli Citrus. So I did just declutter two Kaeli fragrances. I let go of my Musk and my Deja Vu, and I kept this one and another one that I will show you in a minute. So I really like this one. This is a sparkling grapefruit rose fragrance. It doesn't have very good performance though. Like the performance is really lacking on this, but I love the way it smells so much I don't care. Um, it th For me, this smells just like inspirational and cheerful and uplifting and posh and I really really like it. Beside that one we have Christian Louboutin Luby Rouge, heaviest bottle in the world. <laughs> this is a cardamom vanilla and iris fragrance. It's gorgeous. It has like a lipsticky smell and it's very sexy and a little bit woody and incredible performance. I love this so much you guys. Like the second I get to dress up and put on my high heels and wear a nice dress, this is the one I'm grabbing. Um, it's just such a bougie smelling fragrance and the bottle is obviously exorbitant. It's gorgeous. So this was worth every penny. I love this. And now my hand is <laughs> way too sore to continue. <laughs> okay, so continuing on in the back, we have Van Cleef and Arpels Orchidée Vanille. This is the one that I decided to keep over my Bois Doré. I did let go of Bois Doré. This one I find wearable. This one I enjoy. This one I can put on without giving it a second thought. Unfortunately, the Bois Doré, although that was incredible, I didn't think I was going to wear it enough. So this was the Van Cleef and Arpels I chose to keep because it's wearable and I know that I will get use out of it. So it's a gorgeous, um, orangey, slightly chocolatey vanilla fragrance that I really wore a lot in the fall. In the second row, we have Chanel Chance Eau de Parfum. I love this. It's just a very sophisticated, classy daytime fragrance. It's got some patchouli, I think pink pepper. I think there's iris in here. I think there's vanilla in here. Um, just a gorgeous, super sophisticated, sexy, classy, boss woman type of a fragrance. That's how I feel about that one. I love it. Um, then we have Victor and Rolf Flower Bomb. This is a longtime favorite of mine. If you guys watch my channel, you know, and I don't think I have to tell you what it smells like. It's just a delicious, sexy floral fragrance. Very sweet. Beside that one, we have Juliana's Perfume Red Carpet Affair. Again, this is one I absolutely love. This is a dupe for Guerlain's Angelique Noir. And the reason I have this one and not the real thing is because I actually have a decant of the real thing and I prefer this one if I'm being totally honest. This one has a much more pronounced Angelica note. So it's a little bit lighter. It's not quite as heavy as the actual Angelique Noir. If you guys want a discount on this, I will have a discount code link down below for you as well. They are often sold out, but it's this is a beautiful, beautiful fragrance, you guys. I also like the way the bottles look. This is, I have to say, I'm not huge into dupe houses, but I love this one. So yeah, Juliana's perfume has 
impressed me. Beside that one, we have Chanel Chance Eau de Toilette. So basically the same as the original, but a little bit fruitier and a little bit fresher. And this would be the one I would go for for more of those hot days as opposed to the EDP. And I love this. Um, yeah, that's that one. And then also sort of in the same row, we have the classic Chanel number no. five Eau de Parfum. So this one is again, a little bit dated, aldehydic, vintagey, old lady. Some people would say, I don't like to use that term, but some people feel it's like that. For me, it definitely has a bit of an eighties vibe and very vintagey, but I love it. You guys, I really, really love it. And I do wear this one to bed sometimes. So it does have a bit of a dent in it. I just think it's kind of a must have for myself anyways. And I think that as I get older, I'll probably actually start wearing this for daytime sometimes. So I do really like that one. And we also have Mon Guerlain Intense. So this is my other favorite Guerlain fragrance. I actually think I like this better than the original. This one's a bit more heavy on the vanilla and the tonka bean. Um, so it's beautiful. It's very sexy. It's very feminine. It's classic. It's like classic meets sexy. You know, you can't go wrong with Mon Guerlain, I don't think. Although I know a handful of people don't like Mon Guerlain. So coming to our front row, in the very front, we have MFK Baccarat Rouge 540. So I actually don't wear this one pretty much ever. I love this. I love it, love it, love it. This is one that took a long time for me to appreciate. When I first smelt it about a year ago, I was not impressed because I think I just had too new of a nose and I was too used to smelling Black Opium and Livia Bell. I wasn't ready for this. Um, so the reason I don't wear this is because I don't want this perfume to be tied to lockdown, pajama day, cleaning my house. I want this to be tied to some special memories, special occasions, or at least a nice date or something. So that's why I haven't worn this one. Um, but I think this would make a great signature scent and it would also make a great special occasion fragrance. Beside that one, we have Miss Dior. Eau de Parfum, and I love this one. This is orangey patchouli. It's like a fruity, it's a fruity floral patchouli scent, basically very similar to Victor and Roth Flower Bomb, sort of along those lines, and I love it. I think it's a very classy, easy grab and go perfume, and as I told you guys, it is my all-time favorite daytime perfume for women. And beside this one, we have Jean-Paul Gaultier Labelle. I really like this one, Pear Vetiver and Vanilla. This is a 30 ml, so it's just a teeny tiny little bottle, but you can see that I have gotten pretty good use out of it. I'm actually going through it faster than I thought I would. And beside that one, we have Chloe Absolu de Parfum. This is my favorite Chloe fragrance. This is rose, patchouli, and vanilla. And it smells very similar to the original Chloe fragrance. It's a little bit heavier on the rose. It's got that hint of vanilla and it's not like so fresh. It's not as fresh and clean as the other Chloe fragrances, but I love it. This is my favorite Chloe. It's so classy and so pretty. And actually, if I had to describe this perfume in one word, it would be Bridgerton. Have you guys seen that show? You need to check out Bridgerton. I love that show. But this is something I think Daphne would wear from Bridgerton, and I'm a huge fan. I'm a huge, huge Bridgerton fan, so don't spoil it for me. I'm only like three episodes in. And that is it for this perfume tray. And now let's go to my last tray. So I just have my last perfumes on my dresser here as you can see. And um, yeah, that's kind of how I have them displayed. Again, I do really like the look of fragrances being displayed. I think it's a shame to have them tucked away in boxes in a closet. So I do alternate those so that they're not always sitting out. Um, but yeah, let's get started on these final fragrances. Okay, so this is one that I was waiting for to come in before I did my updated perfume video. This is Greenwich Village from Bond number no. nine. So I told you guys that I was between Tribeca and Greenwich Village. I couldn't decide. I liked them both almost equally, and I almost felt like they both had like a very similar smell. So I didn't really think I needed both, but if you recall, I also purchased Louis Vuitton a trap rev and a trap rev and this one have kind of similar like somewhat similar note profile they've got some floral notes they've got some gourmand notes and I was kind of hoping that the Louis Vuitton would smell like this like this for me is everything I wanted Louis Vuitton to be but wasn't so I should have just bought this I knew I should have just bought this in the first place and gone with my gut and I didn't I blind purchased the Louis Vuitton it turned out to be a fail this was the one that I I just I, I knew right away I said you know what you just have to get it because you know you wanted it and you know you love that note profile just get it so I love this one you guys first of all I want to show you 
the bottle. How stunning is this bottle? Um, this is the packaging that it comes with. I wanted to show you the box. So when you order from Bond 9, you get these absolutely gorgeous heavy duty boxes that are so beautiful. They're like a work of art in and of themselves. The only complaint I would say is that it did scuff. You can see there is a scuff there on the lid from rubbing inside the box. Uh, so I turned it around and there's also a small scuff down at the bottom. So that's my only beef is I think Bond Number no. 9 could probably package their fragrances better for shipment. I know I'm not the first person that's happened to, but otherwise I'm very impressed with the packaging. And this fragrance, you guys, is a fresh floral fragrance with a little bit of a gourmand touch to it as well. I think there's also Ambroxan. It's sort of like Louis Vuitton and Trap Rev in a sense, but this one is much more complex and more gourmand, which is what I wanted. So this is absolutely stunning. You get like fresh notes, you get, I think there's lychee in here, so it's like a fruity, fresh floral with a hint of ambroxan and some sweetness. I think there's even cacao in here. I'm not sure. I can't remember. Um, but it's just gorgeous. It's sweet. It's luxe. It's sophisticated. It's classy. It has good performance. Not as good as my other bond, but it does have good performance. So I'm really, really pumped to have this one. Um, so I just left it out here so I could show you the bottle. And I didn't think I was going to like green. I honestly thought green was going to be not my color, but how beautiful is the contrast between the green and like the neutrals? So pretty, so pretty. So I do think I'm going to enjoy displaying this one as well. And let's move on to my beautiful antique tray that I got from Amazon. I will link this down below for you guys as well. And on this tray, I chose to display some of my favorite perfumes as well as there's actually one on here that isn't my favorite. So we have Delina Exclusive. I love this one, you guys. Um, I don't have to tell you about this one. If you watch my channel, you know my love affair with this one. This is a vanilla rose, incense -y, woody fragrance. It's so beautiful. It's without a doubt the best rose fragrance I have, my favorite rose fragrance. Um, so I absolutely love that one. In front of that one, we have Gentle Fluidity Gold. So this is the one that kicked out Ylang and Gold. A lot of people were really shocked when I said goodbye to Ylang and Gold. The reason I did was because for me, that one was a special occasion vanilla, and this one here is also, for me, a special occasion vanilla, and I didn't think I needed both. So this one, for me, just does it for me. Um, I like it much more than Elaine and Gold. That's my personal preference. So that's why... That's why I have this one and that's why I let that one go. So this is a beautiful, kind of a spicy, earthy, um, ambery vanilla fragrance. And it's very complex and very unique and it smells like money. <laughs> if we have to describe it in a few words, that's what it, sm that's what it smells like. Beside that one, we have the original Mon Guerlain from Guerlain. I love this one as well, but I haven't been reaching for it as much lately because I've been reaching for my intense one. So I really like this one as well. Classic, beautiful. I think I will always have at least one Mangerlan in my perfume collection. Beside that one, we have Byredo Bal d'Afrique. This is gorgeous as well. I've always wanted a Byredo fragrance. Um, and this one had to grow on me too. This is a very unique, sort of a fresh um, summertime fragrance. It's a little bit citrusy. It's a little bit floral. It's a little bit woody. It has all of those elements that I really like. I'm actually just gonna take the lid off and sniff it again. It's been a couple of days. Mm. Yep, this one just also smells sophisticated. Again, this would make a great um, signature scent and I cannot wait to wear this in the summertime. So pretty and understated and again, it smells expensive. Love the magnetic cap, love the bottle, love the label, everything about that one. Behind that one, we have one that I'm sort of on the fence about. I've told you guys before that this one is very sweet and I don't find it super, super enjoyable to wear all the time. This is Love by Killian, Love Don't Be Shy. This is the newer formulation. I heard that it used to come in a black bottle and I heard that the black bottle formulation was much better than this one. Um, this is a very sweet, sugary, marshmallowy, caramelly, orange blossom fragrance. It's extremely sweet. Um, it actually reminds me of pink bubblegum, like the pink tape bubblegum that you could, that you used to be able to buy. And even though it is very gourmand, which I usually like, and it's very sweet, which I usually like as well, 
there's something about this one that's almost too sweet. So I don't know. I don't enjoy wearing this one very often. This is one that I'm always on the fence about. So don't be surprised if you see this one decluttered. I'm not quite ready to let it go yet though, because I still enjoy the way it smells and I love the bottle and um, I have been wearing it sometimes, but I'm, I'm definitely on the fence about that one. And then the second last one in the middle is my Cali Vanilla. So this is the second Cali that I decided to keep. This one, you can see I have been putting a pretty good dent in. I love this one. So this one and the Citrus are my two Cali's that I really appreciate. So that's why I let my other two go. Yeah, enough said, I guess. <laughs> so I really like that one. Brown sugar, vanilla, um, easy grab and go, very, very sweet. Okay, and my favorite one, my current favorite one, um, next to Luby Rouge, I would have to say, is this one that I haven't shown you guys yet. And this is from Bond number no. 9 as well, and this is Tribeca. So, first of all, I love this bottle, you guys. I am so in love with this bottle. It's so pretty. Um, it's got that white, like, faux crocodile type of design on it. And this one, you guys, is an incredible fragrance. So this one, you guys, is, it's sweet, it's unique, it's complex, it's sparkling. At the same time, it's very gourmand. It's got chocolate and nutty notes in it. I think there's also ambroxan in this one, if I'm not wrong. Um, it basically smells... It doesn't smell anything like like what the notes say. Like for me, I really don't think that the note profile does this justice. When you first spray this, it does have a little bit of a similarity to Baccarat Rouge. Doesn't smell like Baccarat Rouge, but it kind of gives you that like sort of similar vibe. And as it starts to dry down, you get a little bit more of that like chocolatey, hazelnutty um, type of accord. So a little bit more like nutty, gourmand, sexy. This is very very nighttime, very sexy, but I think you could also wear this during the day. I think this would also make an excellent signature scent, and it's also very unisex. I'm just going to take the lid off and give it a sniff here. Oh, you guys, this is so delicious. This is so delicious. I love this. Um, yeah, I really was on the fence between this one and Greenwich, and I, I couldn't choose. I couldn't choose. They're kind of similar when you spray them. They both have a slightly similar opening especially on paper, but it's on the skin where you get that that difference and that dry down. And this one, oh, like I say, you guys, this one just is an eye roller for me. This is one that your eyes just go back in your head when you smell it. It is so good. So I absolutely love it. And I couldn't be happier, couldn't be happier to have this one. And I also think it looks really beautiful sitting on a tray. So that one is, um, also the most expensive fragrance I've ever purchased, that one and my Bond uh, Greenwich, those are my two most expensive purchases. Even more expensive than Luby Rouge, even more expensive than Delina, so yeah, they're definitely something to be taken care of and not let them go bad. But one good thing about those bottles is that because the bottles are opaque, um, it does protect the fragrance a little bit more, which I really like. So. I don't plan to leave it out here exposed to the elements for very long. I just kind of like to appreciate the perfumes on the tray because I think they look so beautiful. So yeah, that about it concludes it for my updated perfume collection. So that was it for today's video, you guys. It was a little bit long. I hope that you enjoyed. And also don't forget to head on down and check out Ana Luisa's jewelry. Thank you again so much to them for sponsoring the first part of today's video. And don't forget you can save 10% with the code SimpleChicLife10. And that's it for today. I'll see you guys all next time. Bye for now.